Okay, so today we're looking at 7.1, adding and subtracting polynomials. For the most part, this is going to be a lot like combining like terms and distributing. Um, but we do have some vocabulary to go over first when it, we talk about polynomials. So first thing we wanna look at is a monomial. So a monomial is a real number. Variable. or the product of one or more variables with whole number exponents. And we'll look at some examples of these here in a bit. Um, but if you want to write an example to the left of it, a monomial could look like a real number, so 8. Um, the variable, so we can say x, or the product of one or more variables with a whole number exponent. So we could say like negative 2xy squared. Those are all monomials. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents of the variables of a monomial. So with that, we want to know why does a constant have a degree of zero? So a constant is just a whole number. Okay, so a whole number. Since there is no variable, that's the reason why it has a degree of zero. So a constant has no variables. So now a polynomial, which is what we're going to be looking at for this unit, is a monomial or the sum or difference of two or more monomials. And we call those terms. So then when we want to find the degree of the polynomial, it's the greatest degree of any term in the polynomial. And we'll look at that as we keep going. So we have this table that allows us to kind of name each of our polynomials. So if we look at this first one, first row, we have the polynomial seven. So this is a constant, it's just a number. So our degree here is zero because we don't have any variables. And we call that a constant. Okay, now we want to look at how many monomials do we have? So we only have one, and we call this a monomial. Okay, so looking at the second one, 4x minus 8. So we want to look at the exponent on the variable, which here we would have a 1. And we don't have any variables with our 8. So the degree of this polynomial is 1, because that's the largest exponent. And this is called a linear term, or a linear polynomial. So just like what we saw when we were graphing lines for a semester. So the number of terms, how many things are being added together? So we have 1, 2, and that's called a binomial.
Okay. Now, if we look at our third row, 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. So we have the exponent of 2, and then 2x, that's an exponent of 1. So we're looking for the highest. So this first one has 2, and the second one has 1, and the constant is 0. So our largest would be 2. And this one is called a quadratic. So how many terms are we adding together? This would be three, and this is called a trinomial. All right, so now looking at row four, we need, I'm gonna put in our ones on our single variables, okay? So we have negative five X squared Y cubed, or sorry, Y to the first. So we're gonna add these exponents. Two plus one is three. And that's our highest exponent or degree. So that would be the degree of the polynomial. You don't add them all up, you only find the largest. So when we are to the third power, this is called a cubic. So how many terms do we have? We have four. And this is going to just be called a polynomial. Anything over four terms is a polynomial. So when we look at this fifth row, 4x squared y squared, 2 plus 2 is 4, minus 3xy, we have a 1 and a 1, which gives us a degree of 2. And then 1, 1, 0. So our largest degree is a 4. And this is, once we go over a cubic, we're just gonna say whatever degree, so fourth degree. If it was six, it'd be sixth degree, eight, eighth degree, and so on. And how many terms do we have? That would be five. And this is also called a polynomial. Okay. All right, so looking at this first example, Name each polynomial based on its degree and the number of terms. So we're gonna do the first one and then I'll have you try the second. So negative two x y squared. So I'm gonna fill in any of our exponents that are missing. So for our degree, one plus two is three. And then the number of terms there's only one thing there, so that'd be one. So that means this is a cubic monomial. All okay. So I want you to try B. All right, so now standard form of a polynomial. This is when the terms are written in descending order by degree. Okay. So for this example, combine like terms and write each expression in standard form. So let's start off with just combining like terms. Um, so we have, let's actually do B. I'll let you guys do A. So we have 7y cubed plus 5y cubed, and that gives us 12y cubed. Negative 3y minus 2y is a negative 5y, and then plus 7. So now we need to check, are we in standard form? Are our degrees going from largest to smallest? So here we have a 3, a one and a zero. So that means yes, it is. So this would be our solution or our simplified form. Okay. All right, so now I want you to come back and I want you to try A. Okay, so now we're gonna look at what happens when we add and subtract polynomials. 
So simplify each of the following and write each one in standard form. So remember standard form is when we write from the largest degree to the smallest degree. So if we look at this first one, when we add polynomials, we just want to drop our parentheses. So I'm gonna rewrite this, negative x squared plus five x minus seven plus three x plus seven. And now combine like terms. So negative x squared is the highest degree and there's nothing I can combine with. So I'm just gonna rewrite it. Our next highest degree would be to the first power, which would be our five x and three x. If we add those together, we get eight x. And then negative seven plus seven cancels. So our answer here, negative x squared plus eight x. Okay, looking at B, this is when we're subtracting polynomials. And the thing to be careful about here is I'm gonna write a negative one in front of this second parenthesis, and we need to make sure we distribute. So drop the parentheses for your first polynomial, six X squared plus three X minus two, and then distribute this negative. So we have negative one times three X squared would be negative three X squared negative one times five x is a negative five x and negative one times negative eight is a positive eight. Okay, so now combine like terms. Six x squared minus three x squared is a positive three x squared. Three x minus five x is a negative two x and then negative two plus eight is a positive six. And we are in standard form. So this is our simplified expression. Okay, so now that we've talked about adding and subtracting, I want you to try C. And now let's look at this last example. Find the perimeter of a rectangle with width x plus one and length three x minus one. So I'm gonna draw this out. Okay. So our width is x plus one, and I'm gonna write that on both sides. And our length is three x minus one. So remember, when we're finding the perimeter of a rectangle, we're adding up all the sides, or you can use the formula perimeter equals two times the width plus two times the length. Either is fine. I prefer to use the formula. So I'm gonna do that. So the perimeter equals two times our width, which is x plus one, plus two times our length, three x minus one. And now we just need to distribute and combine like terms. So two times the quantity x plus one gives us two x plus two, and two times the quantity three x minus one is six X minus two. Now, if we combine like terms, our perimeter equals two X plus six X is eight X and two minus two cancels. So our perimeter of this rectangle is eight X. Okay.